superintendent indicated, under our constitutional system, my power as president is wisely limited. But there are some areas where my power is absolute. I have fantasized, don't get me wrong, um, but that what if we could just be China for a day? I mean, j j j j just one day, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, where we could actually, um, uh, you know, uh, authorize the right solutions. And I do think there is a sense of that on, on everything from the economy to environment. <laughs> Chilling, just chilling, chilling, chilling. Welcome to the very chilling days we are living in. You see, there is no man like Hitler, thank God, in America. But there are men who would be sort of a mini Hitler, but they speak with nice Woody Allen-like tones, but they want the same end, let us say, without the bloodshed. After all, liberals on the Upper East Side would never openly admit they'd like to have the opposition locked up or put into a re-education camp or a sent to a work camp or, or worse, because they're nice guys. These are the good guys. These are the sort of mildly educated fools of today, the jesters, the pointy-headed jesters of today who have risen to positions way beyond their pay grade, and they actually believe that if we were to become China, things would be well in America. And so we have a president who says that he has absolute power. We don't know what he means by that. We have no, no idea why he was saying that to the cadets at West Point, other than it's a reflection of his own insecurities and his own lack of confidence in his own abilities to lead, because he knows that he doesn't belong there. He understands he is not really their commander-in-chief, and he knew that by the lack of applause and by the tepid response to his rotten, stinking, tepid speeches that he was trying to give, he knew that the cadets despised him. Let us put it this way, they didn't even despise him. They disrespected him. And there's nothing worse for a man who's insecure than to be disrespected. Make no mistake about it. A man of no accomplishments who suddenly becomes president has a very deep insecurity about everywhere he speaks. And so he can go to the uh, speeches where uh, the audience is controlled, such as an elementary school or a Democrat national committee, and get rousing Mussolini-like audiences. But when he goes to West Point where the officer uh, uh, class is being educated, they sit there and they look at the charlatan and they know that this man is not equal to the officers who have trained them. They know he is not really capable of being their military commander, and he senses that. And so what does the chameleon, the brilliant speaker, the great commander of speech, do since he has a sixth sense of for audiences or he wouldn't be where he is? He tells them, never you mind, Although you have guns and although you have uniforms, make no mistake about it, I am very much your commander-in-chief, and I have absolute power. So don't even think about uh, me not being your commander. I have absolute power, like a, a child almost stamping his heels. That's what Obama did over the weekend at West Point. A child stamping his heels, dressed up in a sort of martinet-like outfit, saying, I have absolute power. And then we see the uh, dimly educated Thomas Friedman of the New York Times, who was first on the uh, Pulitzer Committee and then gave himself a Pulitzer, then went back on the Pulitzer Committee and then gave himself another Pulitzer. And before long, he started to believe he was a great journalist uh, along the lines of great journalists, whoever they may have been, and there were some, I guess, along the way. The same way that Christopher Cox was sent in by George Bush to be the watchdog of the SEC, watchdog of uh, Wall Street, as the head of the SEC. And in fact, instead of watching the wolves of Wall Street, he ran with the wolves of Wall Street because the wolves threw him a piece of meat every once in a while. And eventually, when he retired from the SEC, we don't know where Christopher Cox is today, but I can guarantee you his net worth is greater than it was when he, before he became the, uh, the head of the SEC. It's the same thing here. They move from one position of authority to another. They give themselves awards and prizes. They stay within their, their cloistered uh, units of approval. And when they get out into the real world, they find out that they're not exactly who they would like you to think that they are. And so we are now facing the greatest ecological disaster in American history in the Gulf of Mexico, which our distinguished uh, uh, Secretary of Homeland Security called an ocean. She apparently does not know the difference between a gulf, a bay, 
and an ocean, which is very much like the mayor of San Francisco, who has never been on San Francisco Bay, so far as I know. Many of the most devout San Franciscans, all the political class, do not sail, they do not boat, they're afraid of the water, in fact. They have agoraphobia. They only like to go to places where they're lauded. It's the same thing wherever you turn over a rock. You find the same type of creatures lurking beneath them, and they are generally called Democrat politicians. So let's go on with the topic here, while we're still able to do so, before Obama exerts his absolute power in areas that we're not sure... Uh, We don't know where it might come down. We don't know whether it'll be an action against North Korea. Hey, I doubt it. An action against Iran. Hey, I doubt it. An action against China. Ha, ha, ha. No, it'll be an action against you. I can guarantee it. Or against a talker in talk radio because we're creating too much dissent by being dissenters. And let me remind you of something else. In a nation where there is no dissent, you have a dictatorship. And you can quote me on that. The sound of a good democracy is violent, angry dissent. Let me repeat that. The sound of a healthy democracy is a nation where there is loud and angry dissent. Where there is no dissent, or except for a little fake dissent along the lines of the fake uh, liberal conservative talk show setups that you see on uh, the cable channels, When you have that kind of tepid fake dissent, and then they go off to dinner afterwards in the Lincoln Navigator, as I know some uh, crypto, uh, some fake conservative does from MSNBC, he drives away in his Lincoln uh, Navigator, at least he did a few years ago, with the diehard liberals to have a nice big champagne dinner afterwards, and the next day writes his conservative column and huff huffs all about how bad liberals are. That's the kind of fake dissent I am not talking about. I'm talking about the Tea Party. I'm talking about a louder Tea Party. I'm talking about all the Tea Parties organized under one banner. I'm talking about one charismatic leader who will come along and unite the thousands of little Tea Parties around America into a real, powerful force for America. Who that individual is is hard to say. I do not believe that individual has been heard from yet. Or if he or she has been heard from, I do not believe he or she has yet gelled or galvanized all of these disparate movements but the day will come when all of these disparate tea parties will be organized they'll be unified and they will have a voice for america because they in fact are the voice of america it certainly isn't the crypto fascist from the new york times is it and it certainly isn't the shrill president named obama and it certainly isn't hillary clinton who was waiting in the wings to be the next president of the United States by having uh, taken down Obama during the uh, uh, preliminary campaign, shall I call it, the primaries going into 2012, when she runs against Obama. Now, what platform is she going to run on? The oil platforms of the Gulf of Mexico? The launching platforms of North Korea? Which platform can Hillary Clinton really run on? Remember, she is not going to win. She has taken this incredible power she has, This incredible opportunity she has, and she has thrown it to the wind. She had an opportunity to distinguish herself from Obama. Instead, she has thrown it away. But we're too far ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to the Gulf of Mexico and the area near the Gulf of Tonkin on the Savage Nation. Now, why do I say the Gulf of Tonkin? Because there was a war fought in Vietnam a number of decades ago, a war that was being won through the bravery and through the blood of our troops. And the war, in fact, was being won until the seditious media, primarily under that rat commie bum named Walter Cronkite, announced soon after the Tet Offensive had failed and been beaten back by the bravery and blood of the U.S. Army, the U.S. Marines, that bastard Walter Cronkite, known as the father of America, had the nerve to go on national television and declare that the North Vietnamese and the, uh, uh, the others of the insurgency had in fact defeated the U.S. Army when the exact opposite was true. The U.S. Army and the Marines had retaken uh, the city of Way. The U.S. Army and the Marines had retaken Saigon, and they had beaten back the murderous communists. But Walter Cronkite, a long-term fellow traveler of the Communist Party USA, Walter Cronkite categorically poisoned the minds of millions of Americans and put a knife in the backs of the troops who were still left there to die and to fight. 
And so the troops were winning the Vietnam War, but the government media complex lost the war. Just as now, we have millions of people in this country willing to fight for America, whether it be in the streets or in the military. We have a political class who is telling them they are the enemy, not the solution. I'll be back. Savage. 